What's up guys? Today I'm going to take a look at something uh, new and a little bit different from what I usually do. If you've ever read the description on my channel, you'll see that it specifically mentions games like Baldur's Gate and Skyrim and RPGs. Um, CRPGs are probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, genre of games. Um, one of the reasons I love Arma so much is because it has a lot of RPG elements to it, as well as you know all the other cool stuff that Arma has. But uh, at heart, uh, games like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale, and to a lesser extent, Dragon Age Origins, and a little bit of Neverwinter Nights, but while Neverwinter Nights was a natural progression, it did enough stuff wrong, and the story felt kind of boring, is the easiest way I can say it. Whereas the story for Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights, or excuse me, Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale were just amazing. And they were really, they pulled you in. So, the game I'm looking at today is Pillars of Eternity. And it's essentially a direct spiritual sequel to the Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale games. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through uh, a bunch of stuff. I'm probably going to be a little bit all over the place because there's so much cool stuff with this game. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new game and I'm going to we're going to walk through character creation and look at some of the options. And as I go through that, I'm going to explain some of the things that I've learned from playing the beta so far. So I'm going to take expert mode off so that while I'm playing, you guys can see what's going on. There's little tooltips and stuff in game that pop up. And and when I started, I started on normal and I played through the whole beta it's sort of like a beta slash demo, and I played through the whole thing on normal. And I was like, that was a little easy, so I bumped it up to hard, and hard felt a lot more balanced for where I wanted. So, let's go into the character creation. And whenever I play a game like this, I always play a, a human two-handed fighter. But today we'll look through some of the other options. So, obviously, male or female. Go with male. And you've got six races. Human, Amawa, and these are like big, we'll call them, if you want to go in D&D &D terms, they're sort of like half giants. Dwarves, elves, Orlan, which are sort of fuzzy halflings. Once again, in D&D &D terms. And you've got godlike. And I know there's uh, there's something similar in d and I don't remember what they're called, and I don't want to say it incorrectly. So when you choose godlike, there's four different godlike aspects, and you get to choose which one. Death, fire, moon, or nature. So, of course, let's go with fire, so your head's on fire. But then you get to go back to the race selection and then choose which race you want. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but I'm just going to go with a human. And on top of choosing your race, you get to choose a sub-race. And they give bonuses. Once per encounter, five seconds after being reduced below 50% endurance. Okay, and that's something I'm going to explain. Endurance is health, but then there's health on top of endurance. And once we get into game, I'll explain how that works a little bit more. I think the system is really neat. Uh... Five seconds after being reduced below 50 endurance, folk temporarily gain bonuses to accuracy and damage. And that's the same for meadow folk and savannah folk, at least at this point in the beta. And then the ocean folk are once per oh, it's all the, it's the same for all of the human race uh, sub races right now. So I guess it's just a matter of aesthetic choice. So like I said, I usually do fighter. Uh, fighter is great. I I did one full playthrough with a fighter, or actually with two fighters, and then one full playthrough without one, and it was really noticeable because fighters have a lot of knockdowns, but there's really no taunts. So whenever my weak characters were getting attacked in my playthrough without the fighter, I couldn't really do anything to get the enemies off of them, whereas when I had the fighter, I had the knockdowns. So fighters are really knockdown centric, we'll say. Uh... Barbarian, kind of what you expect. They've got, uh, you know, your frenzy and then your your bleeds and your extra damage output. 
Paladin, same. You've got your Lay on Hands. And every class, actually, there's a... Well, let's, let's move to that since I'm trying to explain it. So, like I said, knock down for the fighter. And then you've got your abilities. And then you want your fighter to have... You want them to be strong, perceptive, resolve. And we'll go over a lot of this other stuff later. But what I want to get to right now... Where's it at? All of these choices. Ah, yes. Let's be beardly. And you can choose your colors right off the bat, which is just like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. I always like to go with, you know, I'm wearing armor, I'm going to be wearing leather under it, leather's brown, so let's go with brown. Face. Yeah. So we skipped over the thing that I wanted to show. Alright, I guess we don't get to it yet. So let's rewind back to the classes. And what was I trying to go over? Oh, the uh, the utility feats. So you get, you get utility feats, and one of them is every class can basically heal themselves. So at, uh, at least once per encounter. So you have, you have abilities that are per encounter, and then abilities that are per rest. So per encounter means every time you get in a fight, you can use those abilities X number of times. And then per rest means every time you rest, you can use those abilities ability a certain number of times. Uh, wizard and cleric spells are per rest. So that's that's like classic D&D uh, &D style games. Whereas like my the fighter's knockdowns, those are per encounter. So you can knock down, I think you can get up to three every encounter. So let's go back to a quick overview of the classes. Uh, paladin is sort of a classic paladin. You've got your lay on hands and your your auras, which buff your whole party. Ranger, it's the range class. You get your animal companion. Uh, and one of the really cool things about this game that I want to go over is you're not locked into a, a sort of archetype as far as how you fight. Every single class can choose to be a frontline melee fighter or a light armor wearing range fighter or anything in between. And that's one thing that I really love about this game. So you can make a wizard. And I think we can go... I just want to show you real quick. So you get to choose where you're from. And that also affects your starting kit. And as you can see, you can choose a wizard who starts in you know medium armor with a breastplate. And I thought there was one that started with a weapon. But it looks like they all start with caster implements. But... Like you can see, you start in chain, or you start in, uh, I think it's banded armor, or you can start in a breastplate. And, you know, once you get in game, you can give them melee weapons, and you can specialize in melee weapons. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make that big of a difference. So, that's one of the things that I love, because whenever I used to play Baldur's Gate, I would always dual class my wizards with fighters or something else to make them more beefy. So, Druid, I think they rely a lot on shape-shifting. Monk, they're your, your melee class. And I'm skipping a couple of these classes intentionally. Priest, that's your, your classic cleric. They've got a lot of offensive and defensive capabilities, and then Rogue, obviously. Now, the two really cool classes that are new are the Cypher and the Chanter. And I, I don't think he's supposed to be actually invisible. That's just a bug. So let's make it so he doesn't look invisible. Alright. So Cypher and Chanter. These are both new and unique style classes. Actually, the Chanter is a lot like a Bard. 
Uh, the way it works is very unique, though. Uh, you sing, you get a certain number of uh, phrases, and each phrase gives a temporary buff, and you can overlap the phrases. Uh, and once you've sung a certain number of phrases, you have a counter that stacks up, and you get spells. So once you've sung three phrases, you can cast a spell that costs three phrases to cast. So, and they're really offensively powerful spells. They're really cool. Uh, so it's like a bard and a wizard combined. The chanters are really cool. Ciphers are... I can't even explain it, so I'll go ahead and make a cipher so we can go through it. Ciphers can directly target allies and enemies with powerful soul-focused effects. These powers cause focus, when cipher, which ciphers build through the use of their soul whip. So soul whip is passive on ciphers. Every time you hit something, you can see here, uh, causes the ciphers' weapons to generate a field of parasitic energy that lashes out at the target, increasing damage inflicted and generating focus for the cipher. Focus is the the energy for the cipher, and you start out with a pool, and every time you hit an enemy, your pool goes up. But then when you want to cast, and we'll look at some of the abilities. So antipathetic field. It's basically a a corrosive beam that hits everything in its path, and it costs ten focus. And then soul shock transforms the outer shell of an allied target soul into energy. So basically you cast this on an ally and they become electrostatic, we'll say, and any enemy that gets near them takes shock damage. So we'll go with both of those for now. And so as for abilities in Pillars of Eternity, there are no abilities that are useless to any class. They're all important and with the tooltips on it shows you which ones are more important, but none of them are useless. So for the Cypher, we want a high intelligence, so we'll bump that up. Now, you'll see down here, as I raise and lower the intelligence, you'll see the area of effect and the duration and the willpower going up and down. Now, area of effect, you'll see once we get in game, there's two circles when you cast an area of effect spell. The inner circle is the enemies that the spell will hit, and the outer circle is... Uh, where allies will be safe from the AoE. And as your in intellect goes up, the circle that is safe for your allies also increases. So if you want to cast, say, a fireball, the inner circle will damage friendlies and enemies, but the outer circle will be safe for friendlies. And might not make sense yet, but it'll make more sense in-game. And I normally like having my casters as ranged characters, but in this game it's really not necessary, which is it's really cool. Like I explained earlier, you can go with any kit you choose. Now, the heavier armor they're wearing, the slower it takes between uh, actions. So, you have to keep that in mind. And let's see, what do I want for this guy's starting kit? We'll stick with this. He looks like a badass. And you've got your background. So your background bumps your starting stats up by a couple, and that also makes them cheaper to raise. So I'm making this guy as a cipher. He's sort of like a a mix between a damage dealer and a caster. And by damage dealer, I mean it can either be melee or ranged. So, what skills do I really want him to have? Uh, and we'll get to the skills when... We'll get to the skills, I think, the first time he levels up. So, as soon as we get into game. So, Aristocrat, you get plus two lore. Drifter, stealth and survival. Athletics, mechanics. Athletic mechanics are is nice, or are nice. Lore and mechanics. Athletic survival. Stealth and lore, stealth survival, athletics lore, or plus two lore. So I could make this guy, and lore is even useful for combat. And you'll see why, like I said, once we get into game in a minute. And so is athletics. So let's start with mercenary for athletics and lore bonus. And that'll make us done. 
So when you start in the mm, sure. in the demo, you get your guy, which is right here, huh. and then a party of four Got it. extra. But right now we're going to focus on this guy. Right. And <clears throat> for those of you who don't know anything about the game, the game is constructed uh, in a 2D environment, and the characters are 3D. So it's it's very much like the old Baldur's Gate. Uh, they they've gone back to the handcrafted environments as opposed to the 3D environments of Neverwinter Nights. So right now you can see that my guy only has one focus, and I guess that means mm -hmm. at level one you have to go into combat in order to build your focus up. But luckily we can level up to level four right away. So. We can check out some of the the stuff he can do. Huh. And here's the skills I was talking about. So you see how I I start with a little bit higher lore than others, and points to advance is the same as the others. So that means it's going to be easier for me to get my lore skill up to a higher level than any other skill. So I've got six points, and lore represents accumulated miscellaneous knowledge and trivia, often occult, blah, blah, blah. In combat, it helps characters learn about enemy defenses capabilities each time a character attacks an enemy. Their lore skill helps contribute to revealing their defenses and common enemies filling their bestiary entries. Now, I'm hoping that means revealing their defenses means you're going to be able to do more damage to them. Athletics helps battle fatigue, and just like in the old school Baldur's Gate, your characters will get uh, tired and they'll need to rest. So we'll bump lore up a couple, and we'll bump athletics up a couple. Uh, I only do stealth on, you know, my scout character, which is a ranger. And mechanics is for lock picking and trap disarming. Let's see, traps and locks, and trap placing. Okay. And survival, better use of food and potions. And then there's for all of these skills, there's conversational options. Uh, one. One downfall of the game so far is when you're in a conversation, regardless of how close your party is, you don't get it doesn't use the highest party member's skill. So if you go and talk to someone with your fighter and he's got, say, uh, low mechanics and your thief is right next to you or your rogue or your ranger, whoever you have with the high. Now, this is another thing. Stealth and mechanics, obviously, since they're skills, you don't have to be a rogue or a ranger. You can put these skills on any character. So that I love that. I love not being forced into a character archetype in order to do a certain thing. So I don't actually need the rogue for the the stealth and the lock picking and the trap disarming. I can put that on any character as long as I like you, you can see I can just bump their skills up and make them the the focus of that skill. So where was I going with that? Cuz I started rambling. We were talking about how when you're in a conversation and you start the conversation with a character that has a low skill and there's an option for a character with higher skill, you miss out on that. And that's really aggravating to me. I think it should be, you know, if a character in your party has a high enough skill to activate that option, they should, you know, butt in to the conversation. I think a lot of games have done that, and I don't remember if Baldur's Gate did or not. So let's go next. And we just get more power options. This one's kind of cool. You cast it on an enemy, and everything behind that enemy gets knocked down. So it does damage to the enemy, and then everything behind the enemy gets knocked down. So we'll do that one. All right, now we're finally looking at the talents. So there's class talents, and then there's... Overall talents. All of the offensive, defensive, and utility talents are the same for all classes. So we'll look at those. Uh, weapon focus. And this, the weapon focuses I really like because instead of focusing on just one weapon type, like in Baldur's Gate or a D&D style game, it gives you a whole class of weapons. So Adventurer is Poleaxe, S-Dock, and X-Dock is like sort of like a two-handed fencing sword, a flail, a wand, and a warbow. Uh, what does he have right now? That's a war axe and a dagger. So I think war axe, battle axe. Battle axe is under knight. So weapon focus, knight. 
Change the character in the use of the Battle Axe Sword, Morning Star, and Crossbow. Uh, the Morning Star being a two-handed mace. Uh, Noble is Dagger, Rapier, Mace, Scepter, and Rod. I think Scepter and Rod are both ranged uh, casting implements, but again, you're not limited. You can use those regardless of what class you are. They're not just, you know, mage slash wizard related weapons. Uh, peasant, hatchet, spear, quarterstaff, hunting bow, an unarmed, ruffian, saber, stiletto, club, pistol. Ah, I was wondering what pistol was. Blunderbuss. And lastly, soldier, greatsword, pike, warhammer, arbalest, and arquebus. Arbalest being a massive crossbow and arquebus being, I think, a, a sort of rifle. So those are your weapon focuses. And since he starts with a battle axe, I'm actually not going to take weapon focus at this level. I'm probably going to do a class skill, like greater focus. So greater focus, you just get plus 10 max focus. Uh, but we're definitely going to look at some of these other things. Uh, in Venom Strike, 3 per rest. So 3 times every time you rest, you can in Venom Strike. And this, this is one of those abilities that works either for melee weapons or for ranged weapons, which I think is really cool. So it, it's a poison for 11 point. 7 seconds, but I don't know how much damage it does. It just does raw damage over time, but it doesn't say how much. And then you can specialize Marksman Gunner 2-weapon style, which is dual wielding, and a 2-handed style, which is a 2-handed weapon. Now this is interesting. While wielding a single one-handed melee weapon, I don't know if that applies to having a shield in your offhand, because if you're only wielding a single weapon, you get a bonus to accuracy. Meaning, if you, ha if you have a weapon in your main hand and nothing in your offhand, no weapon and no shield, you get a, a pretty decent bonus. So there's also these things called modals, and these are basically uh, auras, I guess. You activate them, and they stay activated. So it, I get, say this, say this ability, for instance, it's called Vulnerable Attack. You activate it, and it permanently makes you 20% slower in attack speed, but it gives you plus 5 damage reduction bypass and all armor has a set damage reduction so I think for the chain armor it's something like 9 so every time something hits you its damage gets reduced by 9 I think that's how it works I might be wrong but this seems to indicate that it would take that down to 4 so because it gives you 5 damage reduction bypass that's how I think it works and this does the same for ranged attacks Then you've got your defensive. So hold the line. It says increasing increases engagement limit by one. I don't know. You know it says plus one enemies engage. I don't know if that means all of your attacks, you know, go in big sweeping arcs and hits two targets, or if it just means that if you're fighting two targets at the same time, they won't flank you. I'm not positive. And then you've got just straight up bonuses to your defensive abilities, you know, plus 10 willpower, plus 10 fortitude, plus 10 reflexes. And those are all passive, and then you've got cautious attack, and this is slower attack speed, but higher deflection. And I don't know, I don't think deflection is shield only. Deflection is, you know, shield blocking and parrying with a weapon. Then you've got your utility skills, and these are these are cool. And every class gets the, like I said, every class gets all of the offensive, defensive, and utility skills. And no class is limited to armor choices. So fast runner, you always you're always faster. Uh, and here's the the self heals. You've got wound binding. So it once per rest you heal yourself over nine seconds, and then field triage once per rest you heal a friendly over nine seconds. So that's on top of whatever sort of heals the actual healer classes get. The healer classes being the priest and the paladin, and to a lesser extent, the chanter. And I don't know if the cipher actually gets any. So that said, we're going to go with greater focus, which is... Oops, mouse over it. There we go. Just gives you plus 10 max focus. And as a cypher, every time you level, I think you get plus 5 focus, period. So, you know, by level 4, you'll have 20 focus, and then plus 10 max focus should give me 30 total. Some of the other 
uh, Cypher abilities, Biting Whip, plus 1.2. So plus 20% to all damage. That's pretty damn good, considering Soul Whip applies to every time you hit, because that's what drains focus and gives you... or That's what refreshes your own focus. Now this is neat. Psychic Backlash invokes a retaliatory strike, stunning an enemy when they target a Cypher's will defense. But I don't know yet. I haven't... I'm not familiar enough with the system yet, or the mechanics of the game, to know what sort of things target will defenses, so I'm not going to take that. Draining Whip just gives plus two extra focus every time he hits. But, like I said, overall, we'll take greater focus. Just to give more focus. And so that was leveling up. Now I'm leveling up to three, so I get to bump these skills up again. And now I've got level two abilities, so... Mind Blades is pretty cool. It's uh, 15 to 22 slash damage, and then it jumps to targets for 16 to 24 slash damage, and it jumps to five additional targets. And then Phantom Foes, that's kind of a neat one. It gives, uh, it makes an enemy that you cast it on think that they're flanked, so everyone attacking them gets a flanking bo bonus. Uh, Recall Agony is neat. It does 30% of all the damage they've taken over the last 12 seconds. It just does that damage again, so that could be a pretty big chunk of damage. Now there's one, yeah, I think it's this one. This one is great. So this one paralyzes the target and then sticks the other targets near the target into the ground for a certain amount of time. So it's a base of six seconds, but since my intelligence is high, it bumps it up to 7.8 seconds. This is great. I use this a lot uh, because, you know, like I said, in that party that I had with no fighter, I didn't have the knockdown, so I had to keep paralyzing targets when they started targeting my weaker classes. So we'll go with Mind Blades and Mental Binding. This one is also really cool. I did, I had this at one point. So what it does is you cast onto an ally, and it slams into the nearest target to the ally. So say an ally, once again, is getting attacked, and they need whatever's attacking them to get off of them for a second. You cast Amplified Thrust on the ally, and it shoots out into the enemy and knocks them down. But for now, we'll stick with these. One offensive, one defensive. And that's it for the level. So now we're going up to level 4. And there we go, we get that anyways. And we get another talent. So what I do like to do is I do like to give everyone a a weapon focus. Uh, basically it just gives plus 20 accuracy to all of the weapons in that focus. And he's starting with a war axe, but I don't know if I want to do war axe for him, because I could do war axe and shield. Which wouldn't be bad because that's on the knight, and he also gets crossbow, so that'll let him go uh, melee or ranged. I think all of these have a melee and ranged weapons in their class, so maybe I will. I'll do knight for him, or battle axe, not war axe, and I'll give him a shield and then a crossbow. So we'll be done, and now we're leveled up to four, and you can see my focus went from one to thirty base. Alright, now let's talk about endurance. When I look at him, you see 64 endurance and 255 health. So what endurance is, is basically health per encounter. Whenever you go and you start a fight, your endurance is your health for that fight. Your health is overall health every time you rest. So say you get into a fight and you get taken down by all 64 endurance. That'll take my health down, and now i got to try and do some quick mental math to 191. But as soon as the fight's over, even if I got knocked out for that fight, I'll get back up. My endurance will go back up to 64, but my overall health will be down to 191 from 255. Uh, so... What that does is it, it makes it so your characters don't die unless you've been unless you go into fight after fight after fight and you you keep getting knocked down. Uh, hmm. So I think it's a and then in order to get your health back up you just have to rest and resting is done differently in this game than 
any other game I've ever seen, you actually have camping supplies, and it's in your inventory, camping supplies. You only get two. So, you can rest twice while you're out, and then you have to come back into town and go and find a vendor that'll give you more camping supplies. So, I'll go ahead and walk you guys through a quick quest, and I already know what it is. So, I'm going to go over and talk to these guys, and they're going to tell me about a, a woman who murdered a bunch of kids in the town. So haven't you heard there's a murderer? She went mad and strangled a dozen children. So I'm going to say, well, of course that's terrible. I've got to catch her. Ah, and finally, I have a character that has enough intelligence to actually question this guy's motives. So I haven't had this option before, so let's ask him. Okay, so he just sort of deflects. All right, so I'll, I'll volunteer to draw her out. Good, okay. So so he's telling me that there's a mass murderer in the town, someone who strangled... Someone who basically Anakin Skywalkered a bunch of little kids. So uh, I've got it as uh, my quest. And while we're going, for those of you who played Neverwinter Nights, you'll remember that the formation system was gone. And that was one of the biggest, worst things about Neverwinter Nights. It is back, and it's awesome. So... You've got your formations, you've got three basic formations, and then you've got two custom formations. So you right-click, and you can customize the formation however you want. So I always like the staggered column formation. That's always a good go-to. And then I like the T formation. So you have your heavy armor guys up front, and then your your softer guys back in the rear. Right. So you can actually switch to it. So we'll roll with that. And that's just a real quick, easy look at how the new formation system works. And it's great because, like I said, that's one of the big drawbacks that you had to deal with when Neverwinter Nights first came out. Or still, even. <clears throat> so I know where this woman is already, so I'm just going to go straight to her. I just want to find her. Surely even you can understand that. We're decent folk, my lord. Perhaps you should leave and check the wilds. So that's another quest that you overhear and then you can interact with, but I'm not going to do that one for purposes of this video demonstration. So this is the woman who's accused of being the murderer. Uh, someone told me you're responsible for heinous killings. And she names the guy who I was talking to earlier. And she basically admits to being a thief. And I tell her, I want to hear her side of the story. And, you know, I'm not really here to murder her, so I'm just going to tell her how to get out of here. She's a thief. I'm not the I'm not the police, so you can get out of here. Give me any sort of reward for that? Just some gold. Huh. So now I'm going to go back out and confront those guys. Right. And obviously, I'm going to get in a fight. <clears throat> and my other companions are fighter, priest, uh, rogue, yep, and a wizard. So we'll be able to see a few of the abilities from them once we get into a fight. See, my fighter has a two-handed mace. My priest actually has a pike, uh, sort of a long spear. The rogue is dual wielding. Yes. Does she have a, uh, a bow? Yes, she does. Okay, good. And you can just click. Oh, another really cool thing about this game, and let's see. Yeah. And you really don't see this a lot, and it always annoys me, and it's awesome that they do it. You can see the crossbow that he's carrying on, on his belt. And for her, yes. you can see the Warhammer that she's carrying on her belt. What and for the Rogue, you should be able to see she's carrying an axe and a dagger. She's a little small, so you can't see them very well. But they're definitely there. Oh, and for the Mage, certainly. you can see the sword that he has on his belt. 
while he has his weapon equipped. So you can see all of the secondary weapons that these guys mm. have equipped. And that's nice. really awesome. Not a lot of games do that. And I think that's a really cool little detail that you can see. Uh, but. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I skipped something. Let's go back mm. real quick. Because I don't want to fight these guys. I know this is kind of a tough fight. I've done it before. And I've only got five people in my party. So I'm actually going to pick up a sixth person. So let's double time it. Activate fast mode and get back over to the inn. And I'll show you. Uh, another really neat feature that's going to be in Pillars of Eternity. Uh, aside from, you know, obviously being able to activate double time speed by hitting D. So that's that double time speed is going to be really nice for having to travel across big zones that you've traveled across before. Can you deactivate it just by tapping D again? So Good day to you. you go to an, in, an innkeeper, or at least this innkeeper. I don't know if you can do it at any one. But you say, I'd like to hire an adventurer. And it brings you up. Now, you can hire adventurers. My party is level 4, or my main character is level 4. So I, I assume that you can always hire adventurers one level lower. And what this does is it lets you create a new character. Just a whole totally new character. So I'll go through character creation again real quick. Uh, what do I want? I'll go with a ranger. So do a female elf. Uh, and you got two different types of elves. We'll just go with a wood elf. And we're going to do a ranger. Uh, wounding shot. I like this ability. It's a bleed. And it hobbles the target. I'm not positive what hobble does. And I want a wolf companion. I could go with a bear companion, though. What is a wolf? Move really fast. What about the bear? Let's go with a bear this time. I usually do wolf, but I want to see what the bear is like. Ah, oh, bear. Feeling very creative today. Uh, so, ranger is a DPS class, so you want high damage output, high dexterity, uh, perception. So, if I'm going to make a ranger, I'm going to want the ranger to be my, my perception monkey, I guess you could say. Uh, I want my ranger to be able to find all the traps and disarm them. So that means I want to give her any background that has mechanics, because I want her mechanics to start higher. So merchant, laborer. We'll go with laborer. I don't suppose there's one that's stealth and mechanics, is there? Nope. And brown and brown. This is like the third or fourth time I've made this character, so a pretty good idea of what I want her to look like. That's good. And there's going to be a lot more uh, options for portraits when the game comes out, from what I've read. Matches the portrait a little bit better. Follow me. And done. Now I have a sixth party member. And she has a bear. And you can directly control the bear. Fat little bear. Alright. And I gotta level her up. So you get you get to straight up create the the character from scratch. Now I said I wanted mechanics to be the focus. Or do I want stealth? Because I could do one character stealth. I'm not even going to play this game, so it doesn't matter. But my thinking is she'll be high in perception, so I'll make her the sneaky one. So I'll bump her stealth up. So I should have done a different background. But it doesn't matter. Mechanics and stealth are the same level. Uh, so I'll have her sneak around, and since she has high perception, she'll detect all the traps. And then I'll have another character be the mechanics one that'll disarm the traps. So what do we want here? We've got talents. Uh, what does she have? Is that I think that's a hunting bow, and I think that's actually peasant. I don't want peasant. Which one has the war bow? Adventurer war bow. There we go. So we'll give our adventurer weapon focus. So 
swift aim, marked prey, predator sense, 1.5, ranger's animal companion does damage bonus on any creature suffering dot, uh, and her main attack is a dot, so the bear will do 50% extra damage on anything that I've hit with that attack, but that means I would always have to make sure that the animal is attacking the same target. It's kind of microman a little bit too much micromanaging. Swift aim. So that makes you attack a lot faster, but less accurately. Whereas vicious aim makes you attack slower, but a lot more accurately and with higher damage. And these are both modals, so you turn them on. And they stay on until you turn them off. Swift aim. All right, and that's it. All right, now let's go pick a fight. Now that I've got six characters in my party instead of five. Plus the bear. So we'll say six and a half. Right. And we got to reconfigure the party for the bear huh. and the mm -hmm. extra person. There we go. Right, and the last thing I'm going to do for this video is get in a fight. Hopefully I win. So let's save beforehand. Oh, neat. All characters have their own saves. Sure. So, talk to this guy, or girl, I actually don't know which it is. Uh, yes, I found her and let her go. And let's fight. So, alright, I like to get everyone in a line. I've got them, I've already got them defensively lined out, and that's one of the great things about formations. I've got my heavies in the front, so it should be pretty hard for these guys to get around. So I'm going to bring this guy back. Actually, let's bring him back to right here. And let's see, who are we going to get first? Let's give it just a second. All right. So I told you to move back there and you acted like you didn't want to listen. So, all right, the first thing you'll see is you'll, you see the bar, you see the name Medrith, and then the five red icons. I think that's uh, Endurance, which is basically your health for the fight. And I went over that earlier. And, oh look, everyone leveled up because we actually completed the quest. So, where was that at? Yeah, 21,600 experience. Everyone leveled up, except for my character. I don't know why. But, uh, let's see. So, that bar, the yellow bar, under the five uh, pips, is how long it takes between actions. So, you do an action, and then it ticks down to where you can do your next action. And that's the, I'm pretty sure that's the thing that you're, armor weight effects the heavier your armor the longer it takes you between quote-unquote turns to be able to do stuff so let's see fighter fighter has a cool ability called defender it lets you it makes you take less damage but it also lets you engage two more targets increase his or her number of engagement targets to three but it makes you attack slower now i think i don't know if that means you hit three targets at a time uh if these guys run up on us i'll activate but the first thing I'm going to do is knock this guy down, and I'll focus this guy down first. So, uh, Rogue, go ahead and blind, actually, I'll blind this one. It looks like my main dude might be in a little bit of trouble up here. Uh, wizard, let's do something wizardy. Web, oh, I can web these guys? I don't know how fast he's going to cast the spell. I should have started with that. And then you also attack him and get the bear on him. And what do I want the priest to do? Just go ahead and attack him as well. And you should be moving back here. And of course, you didn't listen to me. And you got beat on. Hobbled. Okay, it doesn't look like the web actually stopped anyone from moving. Alright. Did you use your knockdown? Yeah, he used his knockdown. So I guess that guy is actually prone, which is good. And I will use 
the mental binding, which is the paralyze with the AoE that I was talking about earlier. So I'll use that on her. And it looks like in that one hit I did, I already did a pretty good chunk of damage. So this guy is not weak at all. Uh, and what else? We will do Necrotic Lance. A lance of pure necrotic energy causing corrode damage instantly and over time on this guy. I want to. The way I fight in games like this is I focus one target down at a time. Because if that target's dead, it's not doing any more damage. Ooh, that's not good. All right. Let's get the priest, and she's got a a big AOE ability, and this heals everyone and damages all enemies inside of it for a good amount. So I'm gonna pop that because my main character is already getting beat up pretty badly. Boom. Uh, that was not enough, so I'm gonna have to actually heal him. So we'll do that. Where is this guy? At? This guy's almost dead. And is he still in the process? Yeah, he still hasn't cast that spell yet. So I'll bring my fighter around to... And I'll activate the defender, so he should be able to hit more than one target at a time. I will go and swing him around. We'll knock down the archer in the back. Except for whatever reason, he stopped. And that's really aggravating. She should be close to getting her heal off, though. So once again, let's go knock him down. Alright, got him knocked down. So let's turn around and knock this guy down again. He should be dead. Okay, actually, he should be... He is really close to dead, so let's knock this one down instead. We'll put... Another one of these into him. Aha. I think she might have been standing there not doing anything. So this guy should be about to die. I think she's mid-cast in her healing him. No, she's already cast it, so let's get her to cast another heal. And she's stunned? No, that stun never went off. So let's try the stun again, or paralyze. Okay, there we go. Heal went off, there we go. He's back up. Now you can see here his endurance, which is... Health per fight, essentially, is down, and his overall health is also down. So it's both of those things you have to look to. And you cannot heal overall health with healing spells. You only heal that by resting. So let's keep going with the fight. Why is this guy not dead yet? This guy's knocked down. He's about to knock this one down. Are you not attacking? He's attacking. Keep attacking. Alright, that guy's finally dead. So let's switch all of our efforts over to... Who's the lowest? On to this one. Badly injured, badly injured. They're all badly injured. And I'll put my fighter on the guy in the middle, and maybe his swings will hit more than one of them. And I'll get my priest to heal my fighter again. Or, excuse me. My Cypher, my main character. And let's do another cool spell. What do we have left? What is this? So it's three spell missiles that bat... Okay, it looks like magic missile. Let's cast magic missile. And we'll get the... Wounding shot. And still not dead. Character is still getting beat up on, so we'll do another heal. Bear is just standing there. Bear, what are you doing? Go kill things. My fighter did get that other guy knocked down. It looks like he <laughs> looks like my fighter's about to kill this guy. Oh, so my main character got knocked out. So as you can see, endurance is at zero. That means he's out for the rest of the fight, but his health is still at about half. So no worries, he'll get up and do the fight. And my fighter did. He took care of that guy. The rest of the way. I'm starting to get sick of your guys' shit. So, his... The wizard has a freebie spell, Arcane Assault. So, two per encounter. So every encounter, regardless of the other cast's 
or the other spells he casts, he can always cast this twice. And then he's also got one that's defensive, the protective shield of magic, dramatically boosting deflection. But this guy should be about to die. Let's go and stab him with my priest's spear. Yep, he's down. What is this? A boar companion is knocked out. I don't know how it got knocked out, but we'll take care of it last. So don't waste your time on that. Since he's only engaging one target now, I'll take that off. The wizard's running up to cast that spell. See who gets the killing blow first. And there you go. So that was actually a little tougher. Uh, I had an issue and I had to reload the save. I actually beat that fight much easier. Uh, the first time oh, I tried it a minute ago. Sure. So, but that was a little bit more interactive, and you got to see me do a little bit more stuff and manage Crisis a little bit better. So as you can see, at the end of every fight, your endurance, all the characters' endurance, instantly goes back up. Their overall health, however, stays. And the only way to recover that is to actually rest. And now everyone's leveled up. Uh, what actually killed that guy? Wizard... The priest killed him. Interesting. Priest hits. Neat. 8.1 piercing damage. So one of the cool things is in your in your combat log you can go over here and see who did what. And that about does it. Uh, of course, yeah. we need the loot. Everyone wants to see the loot. Weapons, armor, and money. And weapons are money, and weapons are money. Right. Excellent. So let's check out what we got. We got a cool hood. Now look like a badass. And I think we got uh, some better armor. So we got pretty. Oh, one more thing before we leave. So enchanting in this game is incredibly simple. You simply collect uh, materials as you go. So in the game world perfect example right here. If you hold tab down, it highlights all the interactable objects. Uh. So, whatever this is, it's some sort of little flowery thing. I just go and grab it. So it says, Bareth's Bell was added to the stash. So, enchanting in the game, all you have to do is right-click and go to enchant. And it pops up. It's extremely easy. Proofing quality. I, I can, okay. I can bump this up to a fine quality. So this is another cool thing. So this is brigandine armor, and it looks like this, which I like the look of this, but this one is fine brigandine, which looks different. And I don't quite like the look of this as much, but it's better armor. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade the brigandine, the standard stuff, which I like the appearance of better, to also be fine like this one. So all fine does is it adds two extra damage reduction. So I'm going to right-click, go to Enchant, and then Quality, Fine, add plus two damage reduction, and Enchant. Now it's enchanted. And it looks the same. So it doesn't, it keeps its base appearance, and it's upgraded. So now both of these suits of armor have the exact same stats, which is really awesome. So enchanting is literally that easy. That's it. So give him the shield. And I'll go ahead and enchant his weapon as well. So enchant the weapon, quality, and damaging 2. So times 1.3 damage, so that's 30% extra damage. And then you've got secondary damage, you've got burning, corrosive, freezing, and shocking. So I'll go with freezing damage. So enchant, just that easy. Damage plus 2, enchant. And I think I hit the button properly. Yep, and now when you inspect, you can see... It's got Freezing Lash plus 25% freeze damage, and then damaging plus 30% damage. So I just upgraded the crap out of this weapon. And when you look at it in-game, you can actually see that it's got the little frost bits falling off of it. Frost particles falling off of it. So that's another really neat little detail that you got in the game. So collecting materials for enchanting you just collect them as you go and then every once in a while you stop and you're like okay i can enchant stuff and you enchant it and it's just that easy uh i think that pretty much covers right. everything in pillars of eternity i know this video was really long but i went over a lot of different stuff in sort of a, a discordant manner 
and another thing you don't actually get xp from fighting and killing enemies you only get xp from uh the actual quest when i turn when i finished the quest you saw everyone leveled up let's see was there anything else for us to go over i don't think so i hope you guys enjoyed this first look at pillars of eternity at least first look for me uh, i'm ex super excited about it i hope you guys are excited about it or as excited about it as i am i've been i've been waiting a really long time for this game uh I, Dragon Age Origins had a lot of these features, and it was a really good game, but other than that, over the past close to 15 years, there hasn't been another game like this. I love the, the real time with pause. I love being able to pause and give commands and then go again. I think that's a really neat feature. I think that's really turn-based games. I think they should have sort of uh, progressed into the pause-based system like this. and. You know, I'm sort of disenchanted with turn-based games at this point because I, I love this system so much better. So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at Pillars of Eternity. And as usual, thanks for watching.